Welcome back to the Steinberg Wellness Center on the campus of Long Island University here in the heart of Brooklyn in New York City. I'm Alec Krathimmel. To my left is Eddie Kalegi. We are here for the nightcap of a doubleheader of the PSIL CHSAA championship matchup. And this time we got the boys here. Eagle Academy here in Brooklyn matching up against Archbishop Stepanak, the Crusaders coming into Brooklyn here today. Eddie. How are you feeling about this get upcoming game here after one already in the books? Yeah, we had a great game earlier. Brooklyn Law and Tech pulling away in the fourth quarter to claim the girls' championship again. Kind of unprecedented here to have the Catholic League, the public league, come together, compete for a championship. And that's the stage that's been set. We saw it on the girls' side, and now we have an intriguing matchup against nationally ranked Stepanak facing off with an Eagle Academy team that's been known for the heroics and the clutch moments all year. Absolutely. You mentioned a nationally ranked Stepanak team led by Kentucky signee Boogie Fland here. And I'm sure Wildcat fans are going to want to tune in to see how one of their prize recruits coming in is going to look after an early exit in the NCAA tournament. But either way, it's not just Boogie Flynn. They got a lot of D1 talent all over the place, don't they, Eddie? Oh, they sure do. This team is stacked. Uh, Josiah Jervis, someone to really pay attention to. He's only a sophomore, but is going to continue to get better and better. And Dylan Perry's pretty good, too. Already several offers from local programs, Hofstra, Iona, Manhattan. Going to be a stacked mix here, and Stepanak definitely a team with plenty of depth. So we'll look through some of the starting lineups here. First for Eagle Academy at the guard spot, Ja'Kai Sanders at the other guard spot. Johnny Fleming at the third guard spot will be Amir Dockery. Chase Beasley making up the fourth guard spot. And down low at the forward spot will be Jeremiah Jacobs for Eagle Academy. And now for Archbishop Stepanak, who we were just talking about. Starting lineups here for the Crusaders. As you see in the huddle led by Tommy, by Pat Masseroni, excuse me. He's been a bit, built a bit of a powerhouse here in New York City for Archbishop Stepanak, located up in White Plains, New York, just a little bit north of the city. Yeah, Masseroni has done a great job building this program, back-to-back -back city championships, and as you said, this team is really a pipeline program. 14 players have gone on to play either D1, D2, or D3 hoops over the last couple of years. And one of those guys, R.J. Davis, the program's all-time leading scorer, put up 20 points in an NCAA tournament win for North Carolina over Michigan State yesterday. So a lot of talent at the guard spot here for the Crusaders. And again, not just led by Boogie Flan. Dana Carbuccia starting at the guard spot next to Flan has some D1 offers as well, including a Maryland offer a few weeks ago, as well as Josiah Jervis. Again, the sophomore unranked, but someone to look out for on the rise. Again, Braylon Ritvo as well, committed to Quinnipiac, catch fire from three against one of the top teams in the country in Don Bosco a little while ago, back earlier on in the season, put up 30. And then against Cardinal Hayes, another in-state power here in New York, 39 and 12, so he can catch fire quickly. And then the other starter, like you mentioned, Eddie, Dylan Perry, got some D1 offers from Hofstra, Iona, and Manhattan. And Alec, you know, I think this Eagle Academy team has the potential to make this really interesting, though, because of what they've been able to do in the late moments. Brooklyn Borough title game, Ja'Kai Sanders hits the game winner. Last year at the Barclays Center in the New York City Championship, Eddie Munyak, one of the really sharp shooters off the bench, hit a wild game-winning three-pointer. So we shall see how it all shakes out, but I think this is going to be a really interesting battle between two teams who definitely have the capability to make things happen. Absolutely. Dylan Perry and Jeremiah Jacobs will meet up at midcourt. Stepanak in the black uniforms and the Eagle Academy in the white. Ball is up and we're underway. Tip-off taken in by Stepanak. As it'll be Josiah Jervis starting things on offense. And he hands it off to Boogie Fland. Now back to Carbuccia. And now posting up is Braylon Ritvo, the lengthy forward. Now out to Perry, drives in and kicks out. Has a lot of good ball movement as Flan deep three from way beyond the college range. That one in and out, nice rebound taken in by Ja'Kai Sanders. Sanders no look three into the corner. Out for Dockery, and he loses control of it, somehow gets it back, and the floater is off the front iron. Rebound and a quick outlet pass. In transition, a step back and a wild dunk. Taken in by Flan, and we are underway here in the scoring column. A Flan jam to get us started here on a Sunday night. Boogie misses the deep three, but they're in transition. Don't understand how Dockery was able to get back up on the other side, though, and almost finish. Now Sanders. Nice pass down low for Jacobs. He drives in, puts up a tough shot, but he gets fouled there. 
As Eddie, looking back at that last play by Boogie Flay, nice elevation. Yeah, gets the outlet, nice pass, nice feed from Jervis, gets up high. That one, the ball almost actually came back out, but lucky for it to go down. But that's what you get with Boogie Flynn. He is a certified stud. As now two free throws coming up for Jeremiah Jacobs. First one is up, and it won't go. Junior transferring in from Manhattan Center before this season as a D1 offer from Mississippi Valley State. Jacobs really the centerpiece of the inside play for the squad as he has an empty trip. Over two as Stepanak still holds a 2-0 lead about a minute in as Carbuccia brings it up. Now back to Fland at the top. Carbuccia running the show here. Drives in and he kicks out. Fland, a nice kick out to the corner. Catch and shoot three. That won't go for Josiah Jervis. And now moving up quickly in transition is Eagle. As Sanders will slow it down and now he'll pull up from way downtown. Off back iron. And rebound taken in by Perry. Now he's running the floor in transition. Now a corner three for Stepanak once again, and that one wants to go once again. Perry, a nice offensive rebound, sizing up, put back layup is good. And Stepanak out to a four nothing lead early on. Good awareness for Perry to wait on the play, let the defender get vertical, get up in the air, and then finish the little hesitation move. Helps them pay off with two points. And it looks like an offensive foul away from the ball. And it looks like the whistle will be on Amir Dockery for Eagle, and now Stepanak will have the ball back as looking at Pat Masseroni again. Been here for a while, two straight city championships, and he's looking to add another one to his ledger in the PSAL CHSAA championship here. As Flandel bring it up, guarded by Sanders. Now switching on from the screen, lost it off his foot, but a timely pickup there by Perry. Kick out three, won't go from Carbuccia. Now Sanders running the show in transition once again, taking it coast to coast. Tough layup is good. And Ja'Kai Sanders gets his Eagle Academy school on the board for the first time in style. Alec, if Eagle's going to keep up, it's going to be about Ja'Kai Sanders. D1 initially a commit. Ooh, Dylan Perry had some nasty aspirations with that dunk, but it falls out of bounds, and it looks like it hit his hand last. Excuse me, that was... Josiah Jervis is looking at that coast-to-coast -coast layup again. Yeah, highlight reel moments on both ends. As Sanders there through the contact double team, took a lot of contact, didn't get the foul call, but finished for two. And then Jervis wanted to have that rack attack from about 10 feet, but couldn't finish. Now Jacobs drives in, and he traveled. Looked like there was going to be a foul. But he took an extra step beforehand, and a couple of early turnovers for Eagle as they're trying to get some momentum here. See Eagle there with the uh, Jordan brand on the uniform, a big deal for them going into this season to get that sponsorship. As now it'll be Carbuccia to bring it up again. Again, a few minutes in, still a 4-2 lead for Stepanak, crossing over, tough floater through contact, and it's good. Dylan Carbuccia, nice play to make it a two possession lead. Dylan Carbuccia averaging almost six assists a game this year, but he can finish, 44% shooter, averaging almost nine points a game, and right there showing what he's got in the arsenal. As Beasley loses control, but timely play by Fleming. He'll pull up from the corner. Oh, that was halfway down. Offensive rebound, kick out to Sanders in the corner, and he'll reset, driving on Fland. Clears out, puts up a floater off back iron, and it looks like another foul on the rebound, and it'll be going the other way towards Stepanak. That was a great recovery, though, by Johnny Fleming to be able to get that ball back. He's in a double team, lost it, and then the wherewithal to pick it up and then set his feet for what looked like a pretty high, high percentage open three-pointer. Eagle right now getting the good looks, just not getting them to fall. As Darius Al Ratliff checks in for the first time of the game. Alec, the crazy thing their only make so far was probably the toughest shot they've attempted. Nice drive, reverse layup, stuffed. And now... Stepanak in transition. Carbuccia picks up. Deep three for Fland off front iron. And the rebound by Sanders. Boogie Fland right now just a little short. And this is college distance on that deep line. And he's standing way behind it on both tries. Catch and shoot triple from the corner. That won't go. Rebound deflected off a of Ratliff. And it's picked up by Fleming. And now a fresh shot clock here for Eagle. Driving in. Dockery kicks out. 
Fleming deep three from College Range and he swishes it and has something to say as Eagle draws within one about midway through this first quarter. Eagle faithful fired up, smooth finish, smooth operator Fleming. Carbuccio loses control and somehow finds his own teammate and he cashes it home. A nice catch and shoot triple from Braylon Ritvo, the sophomore. What a clap back there. Got lucky with the bounce and Ritvo finishes with the tray. There's another kick out three. This one is up around the rim and it won't go. Tough rebound taken in by Ratliff and now Flan leading the transition charge. Crossing up, driving in through contact, loses control and it will remain Stepanak ball. There's 3.14 to go here in the opening quarter. Stepanak has a nine to five lead as Flan could not control the layup. I'm liking the way Eagles been coaching this game so far. Kevin Hamilton Jr. experienced on that sideline, played at Holy Cross, played professionally in four different countries and now guiding this Eagle Academy program and right now really like the way he's been drawing this up. He's pushing the pace with the offense, but the defense right now not giving any easy looks to the Crusaders. That's now Carbuccia, nice crossover. Trying to work on the defender. Nice kick out, Flynn, another college level three off back iron and rebound tipped away and taken in by Sanders. He'll bring it up in transition. Moving downhill, double clutch, layup is good. And it's still a one possession game for Eagle. A nice take by Ja'Kai Sanders. That's not an easy shot. Had to make the mid-air adjustment as he was cutting right to left and then regathers, finishes. And Eagle right now going blow for blow here with a nationally ranked opponent. Flan finds Carbuccio way up at the top. Drives in once again, puts up a tough layup. Won't go, but a blocking foul called on Eagle. That one will be on Jeremiah Jacobs. As looking at one of these last possessions, nice job running the floor in the double clutch layup by Sanders. Yeah, that was a good job there by Sanders. Good feed to get it up ahead on the entry and cutting downhill Sanders. Smooth finish and Ja'Kai again. Someone who's really been the anchor of this Eagle team. Multiple buzzer beaters this year, including the one to win the Brooklyn Borough title. First free throw from Carbuccia is good. Substitution for Eagle. Coming in is Xavier Caesar. As he will check in for the first time today. Again, Carbuccia, bolt quick game manager, according to rivals New York City high school recruiting analyst Zach Smart. As the second one is good as well. It's an 11-7 lead with about two and a half to go for Stepanak. It'll be Sanders running the show once again for Eagle. High dribble as he kicks out onto the wing. Good defense provided by Darius Ratliff. And a whistle and a foul will be called on Flynn, who's playing some tight defense on Sanders. Yeah, I like the physicality on defense from Stepanak there. A little overzealous from Flynn. But again, Sanders is someone who draws so much defensive attention away from the basket because of his ability to not only shoot, but also cut inside on a one quick step move. As the inbound was deflected and it will remain Eagle ball from that same spot, it'll be Caesar to inbound once again. As Caesar, a bit of a height mismatch with Ratliff guarding the inbound. He finds Sanders in the corner. He'll pull up from three off front iron. And it's rebounded by Carbucci, and he'll run the show again. Bounce pass down low, left wide open, and a three, it's good. As looks like Eagle Academy, Kevin Hamilton Jr. will want to talk this one over after another three by Stepanak. And that one, Braylon Ritvo, the Quinnipiac commit, the senior, hit a couple of big threes early on so far. Well, he's got a three on the front of that jersey, a three on the back, and he's hit two threes in this first quarter. That one, a nice find here. Great pass from Carbuccia. Again, averages six assists a game, and Ritvo steps into it. And when you give him a look like that, he's just simply not going to miss. 41% three-point shooter on the year. And like we said before, he can catch fire like no one else here. As he's hit 30 in multiple games against some tough competition, too. Don Bosco, one of the best teams in the entire country, led by Rutgers signee Dylan Harper. And again, Cardinal Hay is never an easy opponent as well, 39 and 12 against them. So, Ritvo the senior in one of his final games, really starting to catch fire early on as Stepanak has a 14 to seven lead over Eagle. And again, Eagle didn't actually play a title game for PSAL. There were some issues there, didn't end up actually playing, was awarded the title last weekend. So. 
getting kind of thrust into this situation. They had been playing good basketball before that. They won in the semifinals against Brooklyn Collegiate. And of course, avenged a loss to South Shore a couple of years ago. They've had some great battles with that team and beat them for the Borough title by two on that game winner last month. As Sanders will run the show once again as he kicks out on the wing to Caesar. Sanders calling out a play here. Team getting doubled up so far in the first quarter. Trying to probe the defense. Some contact, no whistle. Nice no-look pass down low to Fleming. Now back to Munyak. And now Jacobs driving in. Tough layup. Way too strong. Carbucci in transition. Kicks out for Ritvo. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. Braylon Ritvo catching fire so far. He's got nine of Stepanak's 17, outscoring Eagle on his own. Call him Braylon Thritvo, a trio of trios in this first quarter. And that one in transition, again, the nice find. Flan passes it up and goes for the better shot with his teammate. Floater won't go, and an over-the-back foul on Jeremiah Jacobs. He was a little bit too much to the arm trying to get the put back. So now Stepanak will have it once again. They're up 10, 17 to seven with a minute and change to go in the opening quarter. I liked what Eagle was doing early on, but right now it's just too erratic and they're trying to challenge down low. And while you want to work it into the post, they just really don't have the size to do that right now. As Josh Rivera, the freshman, checks in for Ratliff. Carbucci is slowing it down this time and he'll bring it up once again. And now Flan, a lot of respect to him from this defense. Trying to probe the zone, Ritvo kicks back out for Carbucci. He'll try a three of his own. Can't get the shooter's roll, and it's rebounded by Caesar. Moving in fast. Now Fleming, mid-range J, it's pure. Nice jumper by Ajani Fleming to get Eagle back on the board. Now Fland will bring it up once again. Now Carbucci getting a play call from Masseroni. Fland in the middle of that 2-3 zone that Eagle's showing right now. Carbuccia back to Flan. Now Carbuccia will get it again. Kicks out, and a catch and shoot three is good once again for Stepanak. Hassan Karasi gets on the board for the first time today, and now it's 20 points in the first for Stepanak. Yeah, sophomore already got some offers. Dayton, St. Bonaventure among them, and they're getting right in on the action with a triple. Shot clock off for Eagle. They'll try to, try to hold for the final shot. Five seconds to go now, Sanders. He'll make his move, drives in another tough floater and it's blocked away without a foul call. And that's how the first quarter will end with another defensive stop for Stepanak as they lead 20 to nine after eight minutes, 24 to go here in the PSAL and championship appearance and looking back at that last three. Yeah, that was a great look there from Caracy and really that's been the story so far for Stepanak. The ball movement has been impeccable from them. Boogie Fland not trying to do everything himself. Only has two points so far, but it's been the supporting cast. Of course, Braylon Ritvo with the three three-pointers, but that's only happened because of the way they've distributed the basketball. Extra cuts, we saw it on the first possession of the game, all five players touched the ball, and that really set the tone. And for Eagle, got to try to find a way to adjust, but right now, besides the one three and getting bailed out by a couple of finishes from Ja'Kai Sanders, not much to speak of for Eagle Academy. And it's an interesting program that actually has a lot of ties with the building we're at. LIU, two players from their team last year ended up being LIU commits and played for the Sharks this season, Eric Acker and Treshawn Shepard. Again, this is the first year of the PSAL and CHSAA championship as the Public School Athletic League and the Catholic High School Athletic Association meeting up for the first time, just announced not too long ago for this championship. And I said this before, but always like to see the best of the best go at it. And we're already seeing it so far today. And we've already seen the PSAL get the first victory of the day on the girls' side with Brooklyn Law and Tex win over Kennedy Catholic. So an opportunity in this game for a PSAL sweep or for the Catholic High School Athletics Association to clap back and get a split here for the first year of this event. As Ja'Kai Sanders will bring it up once again, runs the show for this Eagle offense. Now back to Fleming at the top. Trying to work down low. Picks up his dribble. Crowd wanted to travel. 
Nice baby hook there for Ahmed Ibrahim, who's checked into the game for the first time. And Eagle strikes first in the second quarter. Yeah, Ahmed Ibrahim, no men got locked tonight. So Ibrahim, six foot nine, he's the real size down low. Want to see what he can get to do. They're an easy bucket. And a foul there on the three-point attempt by Josh Rivera. And he'll have three free throws. It seems like Stepanak has adjusted well to this 2-3 zone the Eagle has thrown at him. Yeah, they really have. I think they're finding ways to get cutters, also setting good screens. But again, it's the quick passing. That's really the recipe for success right now for the Crusaders. And there, doesn't get the shot to go, but they'll get a couple from the line. As Rivera's first free throw around the rim, and it won't go. Has not made a free throw yet this year, but as a freshman, impressive to make the varsity team. Smooth jumper. And he's found a way to contribute in a stacked guard room for the Crusaders. As he makes the second free throw, his first of the season. And that pushes Stepanek's lead back to, a, back to double digits with 10. Yeah, if you're in a program like this as a freshman and getting significant minutes in a city title game, you know there's big things ahead for this kid. So Rivera goes two for three from the line, and Stepanek is doubling up. Eagle once again, 22 to 11, about 40 seconds into this second quarter. Sanders barking out instructions again. Now over to Eddie Munyak. He'll catch and shoot from three. Off back iron. Offensive rebound back to Munyak. Now Johnny Fleming rising high from deep. Won't go. Munyak rises high for the offensive rebound, but he tips it out. And Stepanak gets it back once again. Yeah, love the hustle from Eddie Munyak. Almost palmed that ball, but misfired on the first. And Fleming missed on the second. And if Eagle isn't hitting from deep, it's going to be really tough for them to keep up with the Stepanak squad. Now Flan helps break the press. And another three here for Stepanak. Off back iron, but a nice offensive rebound by Caracy. And now Flan will reset. All around the horn. Can it go off the front iron? That one was close as Sanders will bring it up once again. Now Fleming steps back, feeling himself from deep, and he hits it. What a three from Ajani Fleming to cut this lead to eight. He was feeling himself on the perimeter, and he hits it from deep. Much needed there, and he's got eight of their 14. Reedvo can't respond, and rebound taken in by Ibrahim. Now Eagle starting to feel a little bit of momentum. Fleming left open. Can he hit again? Off front iron, and rebound taken in by Fland. A lot of Eagle fans here. They are from Brooklyn. As Rivera, nice kick out to Reedvo. Puts up the tough layup and he converts through contact, and the lead is back to double figures. How about this game already for Braylon Rifo? First player in double figures, he's got 11. That's now bringing it up as Sanders once again. Entry pass to Ibrahim. Nice no-look pass, but a good read by Amir Sullivan to deflect that one out of bounds. That was like one of those Nikola Jokic wraparound no-look passes. Looking back at this, good little give, and Rifo splits the double. And a nice finish off the backboard. Now Sanders guarded by Flan. The guard matchup to watch all night long. Splits the double team, but he gets stripped. Now moving in transition is Carbucci up to Flan. Euro layup, and he converts it. What a move by Boogie Flan doing it again down low. And the lead is 12. A little saucy action there from Fland, who again hasn't had to do all that much so far for Stepanak, but right there showing why he's Kentucky bound. Now kick out to the corner to Caesar. He'll try his luck from deep. That misses everything. Rebound went right to Ibrahim, and he cleans up the garbage and puts it home to cut it back to 10. And I expect a lot more of Ahmed Ibrahim. It seems like he's not the easiest matchup for Stepanak at six foot nine. Gotten four quick points and has also really imposed himself down low. And as a tough layup won't go, that one attempted down low. And a nice bounce pass down low once again as Johnny Fleming converts. And now Eagles make it a little bit of a run. It's down to an eight point game. Carbucha slows it down over to Flan. Going around, trying to break the two three zone. Flan calling out instructions. Kicks out to Carbucha. Driving in, goes under the rim. A nice bounce pass, but it's deflected away by Caesar. And he kicks out to Sanders, who finds Munyak. He'll try his luck from deep. Around the rim, putback is good by Ibrahim. And Ibrahim's been working on the boards, and now Pat Masseroni wants to talk it over amid a raucous Eagle Academy crowd. It's back to a two possession game. Yeah, a little bit of a home atmosphere for Eagle playing here in Brooklyn. And 
I really like the way that Ahmed Ibrahim, six foot nine, is hustling. Munyak's gonna miss this shot, but Ibrahim in transition gets right down, gets into the paint. That's where he needs to be, and it's working. Six second quarter points here to cut it to a six point game. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a miscommunication by Fland and Ritvo. Neither one knew to box out, and it leads to just a six point game here. As Eagle has done a great job of getting back into this one, it's led by Ibrahim. The senior transferring in from Thomas Edison. A lot of newcomers on this Eagle squad. Yeah, this Eagles team has made some change. Sanders is an interesting story because he actually started out here at Eagle Academy and then went to Bishop Laughlin and then decided to come back, circle back for a senior year. And it's really paid off for Eagle Academy to have him on their roster. He's been a nice replacement for the departures of Eric Acker and Treshawn Shepard, who now call this arena home for LIU. Again, back here at the Steinberg Wellness Center is Carbuccia. Kicks out the Fland. Again, the 2 3 zone from Eagle. And a tip and a nice steal by Caesar. Sanders has an open floor. It's showtime! Rack attack from Eagle as it's now a four point game. Nice. Ja'Kai Sanders with a throwdown. And a nice play defensively by Caesar to rip it away and just feed it ahead and let Sanders do the rest. Flan, momentum three, off back iron. Caesar, another rebound. Now Eagle in transition. Now Shepard will try his luck from three, and he connects. This place is alive, and it's a one-point game. A Johnny Fleming with three three-pointers. That one, the biggest of all. And Stepanak all of a sudden Feeling the footsteps. Scarbuccia, point guard trying to calm his team down. Fland will pull up from three, off back iron. Eagle has a chance to take the lead and a frustration foul by Stepanak. That one on Caracy. As we'll take a look back at some of these momentum shifting plays. And Eagle is soaring as is Ja'Kai Sanders with that play and look at the energy, the emotion. You can tell what this city title game means to both these teams. As now Adonis Ratliff checks into the game, looking back at that Eagle sideline. Pretty hyped up to be back in this one. Ja'Kai Sanders working on Flan, tipped out of bounds, and Flan manages to tip it off of Sanders, so it will be now Stepanak ball, trying to just get some momentum back here. The crowd is on Eagle's side, and so is the basket, too. And yeah, gonna need more from Boogie Flan, only four points to somebody who averages nearly 20 a game. He has it on the left wing. Carpuccia. Carpuccia now trying to get into this defense. Flan cross court pass gets it back. Now Carbuccia. Seems like it's just Flan and Carbuccia. Not much movement on offense. Carbuccia drives in, kicks out, and throws it away. He was trying to find someone in the corner. But Stepanak has not been able to figure out this 2 3 zone since Eagle started implementing it on defense. Yeah, Alex Stepanak right now a mess, and Eagle has stolen the momentum. Really looked like Stepanak had a chance to run away with this game in that first quarter. Crusaders were up 20 to nine. Everything was going right. Nothing was falling for Eagle, but the vibes have certainly switched here in the second. Ja'Kai Sanders driving in. Somehow Euros, but it's rejected away. And the rebound thrown away. Sanders gets it back. Give and go. Nice lay down low for Ibrahim, and he slams it home. That's eight second quarter points, and all of a sudden Eagle has the lead. Flynn driving in. Nice up and under layup, it's good. Fall away jumper for Fland, and that's the spark that Stepanak needed, and now they're back in the lead in a back and forth affair. That's a CQ, a crowd quieter from Boogie Fland. Good answer after Eagle stole the momentum. Fland's gonna have to do more, but right now, still, all things are pointing towards Eagle Academy. Sanders cross court pass a little high for Caesar, but he brings it in. Driving in on Sullivan, pump fakes, puts up the layup around the rim, and it goes. And Steinberg Wellness Center loves it. Eagle gets the lead right back and a chance for three by the freshman Xavier, or the, the, the junior Xavier Caesar, excuse me. Contact, stays locked in. Look at this drive, left shoulder spin move, hesitation. That's his bread and butter. As is from the charity stripe, great free throw shooter. Hit some clutch ones last year to help lock up that city title. Now Pat Masseroni has to be saying to his squad, you gotta get moving on offense. They have not been able to crack this zone just yet. As here's the end one free throw from the junior Caesar. He converts. Two point lead for Eagle now. As Flan brings it up and breaks the press. 
A lot of contact on the pass to Revo. Flynn gets it back. Right it closely by Caesar. Under two to go. Eagle leads by two. Kicks out to the corner. Quick pump fake. Drives in. Loses it in the air. But draws the foul as Josiah Jervis will be headed to the free throw line. Again, a 30 to 28 lead. Josiah Jervis has a chance. Sophomore to tie this one back up. Someone else you'd expect to see more of. Jervis yet to score in this game. Has had a couple of assists, but really need to get him going if you're stepping back. First free throw is good. He's an 82% free throw shooter on the year coming into today. So he's the guy you want at the line right now if you need some quick points. As the lead is cut to one. And we're back even here. 30 all with a minute 38 to go. Eagle seems to have all the momentum right now, but can Stepanak stop it and get back in the lead, or can Eagle extend it? Sanders working on Fland. Now finds Fleming. Drives in, kicks out, catch and shoot three from the corner, Cash. Once again a three. This one by Chase Beasley. And the lead is back up to three. Sharp shooters all over here for Eagle. They wanted to win, they need a bunch of players contributing. Long three is too strong. Off the back iron by Stepanak. But they're getting those contributions all over and Beasley the latest to get it going from deep. Now Sanders running the show once again, gets downhill, floater blocked away by Fland. Now Stepanak in transition and slowing it down. Crowd wanted to travel, so did the bench, didn't get it. Finds a wide open Fland in the corner, that's his bread and butter and he catches it home and we are tied once again. Uh, Kevin Hamilton Jr. livid on the sideline. It's Boogie Flan getting going here in the second corner. Really hounding Sanders as he kicks it out to Fleming. Two second difference between shot and game clock. Fleming will pull up from three. That one no good. Ibrahim another offensive rebound and a foul on Sullivan. Ritvo and Sullivan both unhappy wanted it over the back. But now... Shot clock is off if Eagle wants to hold for the final shot to get the lead going into the locker room at halftime. Yeah, I think Ibrahim got the rebound successfully without really committing it over the back. Had the arm stretched out, but didn't make any contact. I like the call from the refs here. And some interesting whistles over the last couple of minutes in a game that it's become so competitive, and what a second quarter it's been for Eagle Academy. 24 points in the frame and a chance for more here. As Carisi checks back in for Stepanak. And we got a whistle, and it looks like an away from the ball foul offensive. Looks like it's on Sanders. He kind of pushed off Flan, trying to free up space down low. And now Stepanak will have a chance to put some points on the board with the shot clock off. And those are the mistakes, self-inflicted wounds, that if you're Eagle Academy and you want to pull off, which what a lot of people would believe to be an upset in this title game against Stepanak. you got to avoid things like that, but it looks like they're actually going to rule that a defensive foul because Eagles keeping it underneath. Yeah, it must have been a push off on Fland, which looks like it was the call. And now Stepanak will have it right back anyways as yeah, so it just ends <laughs> Fleming could not handle the inbound. Yeah, the foul on Boogie Fland, that was his second, so he came out that defensive possession, but now that Stepanak has the ball back, he'll come in for the final 16 seconds. It'll be Carbucci to bring it up. The Yonkers native. 10 seconds on the game clock. As he gets it over to Jervis. Now back to Carbucci. Reedfo, he's been the hot hand. Three seconds. He'll pull up from deep, and he cashes it home to give Stepanak the lead as we head into the locker room. 36 to 33, and Braylon Reedfo has been a huge part of why they have that lead right now. It's the Ritvo show right now for Stepanak. Four three-pointers, 14 points in this half, but Eagle continues to answer. They've been doing it all game long. There's the latest one from Chase Beasley. Johnny Fleming's hit three threes. It's really Ritvo versus Fleming right now. I think we all expected Sanders versus Flan, but Fleming doing well too with 13 of his own. So we head into halftime 36 to 33. Bishop, Archbishop Stepanak leads Eagle Academy Brooklyn. Don't go anywhere. More to come here on League Ready in the, in the CHSAA and PSAL championship game.
Welcome back to the Steinberg Wellness Center here on the campus of Long Island University for a PSAL CHSAA championship matchup between Archbishop Stepanak and the Eagle Academy Eagles. 36-33, Stepanak leads at the half. Alec Krauthammel here to take you through the action. To my left, Eddie Kolegi. And Eddie, it was a wild difference between the first and second quarters. Eagle really got back into this game. Yeah, the script was flipped in the second quarter. In the first, it was all Stepanak. Boogie Flynn making plays as a shooter, a distributor, and Braylon Repo hitting three three-pointers. It was 20 to nine, and then all of a sudden, things changed in that second half, in that second quarter, rather. Really impressive performance from Eagle Academy, and it was a Johnny Fleming especially with those 13 points, including eight in the second frame, and very underrated number 21 middle verse screen. Ahmed Ibrahim, six foot nine, eight points off the bench. Looks like he's gonna be starting the second half from the bench, but did get an extended run when he came in. I think he's gonna be a vocal point here for the Eagles in the second half as well. So Stepanak will have the ball coming out of half. Court flipping sides here as Boogie Fland will get things going here in the second half. With the Crusaders leading by three, and now Dylan Car Danny Carbucci, excuse me, will bring it up. Back to Fland. Nice down pass down low to Ritvo, rises up and a finger roll finish to get the third quarter underway for Crusaders leading scorer today, Braylon Ritvo. Again, this is a guy who's caught fire at times. 39 points against Cardinal Hayes, like you mentioned earlier, 30 against Don Bosco, and. Well on his way now, up to 16 points. Kai Sanders, good first step, kicks out, a catch and, catch and shoot three, too strong. Ball goes out of bounds, will touch Ja'Kai Sanders last. So Stepanak will have a possession once again. That's shot by Chase Beasley. Hit a couple already, there he is here. As Carbucci will bring it up, gets it over to Fland. He'll call out directions on offense. Carbucci back to Flan. now kicks out in the corner. Flan, playing a lot of around the perimeter here. Flan slowing it down, no look dish down low, and a foul before the kick out will be called. As that was Dylan Perry drawing the foul. A good baseline cut by Perry, and how about that no look like you mentioned from Flan to set that whole thing up. And the foul on Beasley as the inbound is tipped by Beasley and taken in by Eagle. Sanders looking to go downhill once again. Nice kick out, Fleming, he's got the hot hand and he can't continue, but heads up play by Sanders and he gets the easy put back to bring it back to within a three point game. Yeah, that's a lapse that just cannot happen in a close game like this from Stepanak. Nobody boxes out Sanders all alone right side of the paint. Now Flan back to Carbuccia. Looks off, back to Flan. Now a nice kick out to Rifo. he's the other hot hand. Gets knocked down, no whistle, but an offensive rebound by Perry. Ritvo gets it on the block. Nice baby hook, can't fall. And the rebound by Sanders. Looking to move quickly, a nice kick out. Driving in, tough layup. And there will be a whistle there. A nice drive by Chase Beasley once again. As it looks like he's a little shaken up on that play. Yeah, Beasley got hit hard lower side and he's down and he was in some real pain on the baseline. Don't like to speculate, but it looks like he's holding his hand after a tough drive. Yeah, landed really hard there on the contact. The foul wasn't all that hard. So he's gonna be helped up by a pair of teammates, but it was the landing really hurt him. And it looks like he'll come out of the game, so Eddie Muniak will check in to shoot these two free throws. Yeah, it looked like he's going to go to the locker room. Hopefully Beasley's all right. Got hit where you don't want to get hit as he landed. Definitely not as Muniak will have the two free throws in place. First one is up and it's good. Someone else, I think, if you're Eagle Academy, because you know defensively they're going to hone in on Fleming in the second half. You need Muniak to start making some plays. Maybe the best three-point shooter on this team besides the two star guards and Sanders and Fleming. And he's already back on the bench for Eagle. That second one's good, and looks like he's just trying to walk out whatever he might have injured there. As now Stepanak with the one-point lead, trying to break the press. Back to Reedvo, he turns around. Nice kick out from Flan to Perry. Catch and shoot triple. 
off iron. Nice rebound, puts it up and one as Dylan Perry gets the rebound off the Josiah Jervis miss and he'll have a chance for three as Stepanek has a chance to make it a two possession game once again. Well, we saw the trouble boxing out. Not that time, though, for Stepanak. Offensive glass, Perry there, and no resistance, really, from Sanders or Dockery. Dockery's only 5'10", Sanders 6'2", and Perry at 6'6", makes the most of that 1v2 matchup. And Dylan Perry's three-point play is converted. Again, he's a great athlete and can help spark some runs with his effort and athleticism. Maybe we just saw a run get sparked right here as Munyak. Back over to Dockery. Trying to find Sanders running off a screen, and he gets in the corner. Tried to draw a foul on Jervis, and he successfully does before the layup. So a foul there, the second on Stepanak in the quarter. We're starting to see a couple more fouls here, which makes you wonder in a close game, we might get some free throws into this third quarter. As now Fleming, hot hand, shoots it once again. That one can't fall. A nice offensive rebound and put back for Dockery, and he gets on the board. Dockery, a smaller guy, but hey, sometimes size doesn't matter. Elusivity is what does, and Dockery sneaks in there for the put back and the two points. Reedvo loses control but draws a foul. And the crowd does not like that one. As Reedvo draws the contact and will reset possession for Stepanak. Two fouls for Dockery, not much to worry about yet. Once you get that third, you start wondering because this is a pretty small rotation Eagle plays with in comparison to Stepanak. Flan back to Carbuccia. Now Ritvo, hot hand, corner three, off back iron, and Munyak calls it in. Still a two-point lead for Stepanak about three minutes into this third quarter. As Sanders trying to work on the perimeter. Nice pass through the double team. Pump fakes, puts up a layup, and can't finish it as it's rebounded by Ritvo. Fland in transition. And he'll slow it down and set up the half-court set. He's got Carbuccia open. Now Jervis driving in. Finds Carbuccia. Probing the defense. Nice pass to Jervis. Back to Fland. Thought about a three. Drives in. Double clutch layup is good for Boogie Fland. Yeah, Eagle commits to the zone there a little off balance, and Fland gets a lane, goes downhill, and an easy two. Dockery crosses up Carbuccia. Passes back out to the perimeter, and Dockery will get it back. Trying, calling off the dogs here, trying to work on Carbuccia himself. Gets a screen. Now fakes out the defense, kicks out, and it's intercepted by Stepanak. Wide open lane for Fland. Puts up the one-handed scoop, and it's good. Fland doing a lot of his work down low, and now Stepanak has opened up a six-point lead. As Fland and Sanders are really going at it as we have a timeout here, as it looks like Kevin Hamilton Jr. wants to talk some things over as Stepanak is starting to pull away here in this third quarter. Yeah, only a six point game, but things are starting to happen and you see the interception, Jervis the vision and Flynn the finish. Got that left hand really held down too. Could have been a foul call, depending on the refs viewed that one. And a little chippy there with Sanders, but right now Stepanak asserting their will, which is about what we expected against an Eagle team that is an interesting program. So it's Eagle Academy, they're called Eagle Academy 2 because there's actually five others that are part of the Eagle Academy Foundation. One in the Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, Harlem, and even one in New Jersey in Newark. It's a all boys grade six through 12 school opened back in 2008, but their basketball program has been on the rise under Kevin Hamilton Jr. Made it to the PSAL title game two years ago then won the PSAL last year on an Eddie Muniak buzzer beating three at Barclays Center just down the road. And then won the PSAL and now have a chance to win this inaugural city title against a Catholic opponent. As Docker will run the show on offense. Being almost face guarded by Carbuccia. And now back to an open Xavier Caesar. Trying to find someone. And he does, back to Fleming. Fleming, a tough inbound entry pass, is deflected away to Ibrahim, loose ball, picked up by Fland. Now he's got Munyak to get around behind the back pass to Ritvo, and he was going up for the slam, and he draws the foul there. 
And Reedville has something to say after drawing the contact. That was a wild play right there. The ball comes loose between three players, and then look at Boogie Flynn, little flip behind the back. That's what he does. Reedfo there gets hit pretty hard. And now we'll get a chance at the line. And on top of that, four team fouls as well for the Eagles. So one more, and it'll be guaranteed free throws the rest of the quarter. As Reedfo hits the first, again, one of the leading scorers today for Stepanak, a 71% free throw shooter, committed to Quinnipiac up in Connecticut. As here is the second incoming. And planks that one off back iron. And now Eagle will bring it back up, down seven with three and a half to go in this third quarter. Moving to the wing, now finds Ibrahim. He's been great down low. Little turnaround hook, just in and out. And it's rebounded by Stepanak. It'll be Carisi to bring it up. Now Carbuccio will run the show once again, trying to clear out at the top of the key. Flynn kicks out Ritvo. He's left open again from three, and he hits from three once again. Braylon Ritvo, his fourth three of the game, and it's right back to a double-digit game. Stepanak has locked in. It's Brooklyn Braylon tonight, five three-pointers. He is completely unfazed and making it happen when it matters most in this title game. Ibrahim loses control of it, but he will draw the foul. A lot of contact trying to double him, as that it will only be the third on Stepanak in this quarter. So not much to worry about in the bonus, but again, you saw the effort that Stepanak had to go through on defense to contain Ahmed Ibrahim, who's, been, who's done great work down low. Yeah, he's seeing doubles now because of what he did in the second quarter. And again, Eagles down 10 right now, but they were down by 11 at the end of the first and then rallied in the second. So Stepanak still, even though they have breathing room right now, have to keep the foot on the pedal. Dockery finds Sanders, trying to drive in. Now a deep three from Fleming, too strong, and the rebound by Stepanak. Caracio, a long outlet pass to Carbuccia. Eurostep connects. A beautiful move by Dylan Carbuccia, and the lead is 12 now. That was crazy off balance. Thought there was no way that would go in, but Danny Carbuccia willed that one to the basket. Sanders driving in, a lot of contact with no whistle. And now Flynn in transition, long pass to Ritvo. Easy layup is good. He's done it from two, he's done it from three, and Braylon Ritvo has his team ahead by 14. As it looks like Kevin Hamilton Jr. will want to talk things over once again. What a night, 22 points for that man right there. Look at this finish from Carbuccia. High archer that drops in down low. And then the finish most recently in transition from Ritvo. And suddenly Stepanak is making this about themselves and pulling away. Again, we've seen three different stories so far. First quarter, slightly dominated by Stepanak. Second quarter, Zoll Eagle Academy, and then in the third, the Crusaders have just been locked in ever since. And they've done it in a lot of different ways so far. And the first quarter was all from the three-point line, and in the third quarter, it's been all from inside. As a little bit of a celebrity in the house right now, VJ Edgecombe, a Baylor signee, come to watch some uh, big NYC hoops action here. He goes to Long Island Lutheran as he's headed to Baylor, number four in the ESPN 100 rankings. Bit of a star in the house so far tonight. Yeah, someone who is gonna be making a big name of himself for those Baylor Bears next year. One of the top five recruits in the country. Gonna take in some great high school basketball here in this inaugural PSAL CHSAA championship event. And Edgecombe, a consensus top five, and he's watching Boogie Flynn, who's a consensus top 20, sign in the early signing period with Kentucky. As Sanders once again trying to get free. Him and Flynn have been going at it pretty much this entire game. And they'll slowly bring it up. And Flynn is basically face guarding him in the backcourt. Gets around a screen from Ibrahim. Loses control of it and a foul will be called. That one will either be on Carbuccia or on Ratliff. We're going to get Carbuccia for it. That's going to be his first. Actually, it's on Dylan Perry. So that's his Perry. third. The starting big here for Stepanak has his third foul. And that'll force a substitution. As Darius Ratliff comes in. A lot of NBA connections here for the Stepanak team. Darius and Adonis Ratliff, both the son of former NBA one-time All-Star Theo Ratliff. 
Uh, another son of an NBA player, Howard Isley Jr., son of Howard Isley, formerly of the Jazz. Has a lot of contact and an offensive foul on Ja'Kai Sanders. Again, him and Fland, a lot of chippiness going on, and he draws the charge, and Fland feeling himself after drawing that one. Yeah, Boogie Fland really sells that one, but clear contact, easy call, and Eagle at this point getting a little bit desperate, I feel like, as they've seen this game slip away. 12 unanswered points from the Crusaders looking for more. And Ja'Kai Sanders, that's his third foul as well, something to look out for. Cross-court pass for Fland. He's working on the perimeter once again. Now Carbuccia. Eagles still in that 2-3 zone. Driving in a scoop layup. It won't go. And a tough rebound taken in by Fleming and tipped out by Carbuccia. And Eagle will retain possession. Yeah, Carbuccia levitated there looking for that finish. Just turned his body a little too much and he ended up shanking it a little left on the layup. He'll come out. Amir Sullivan checks back in. Sanders and Flan been the matchup to watch all night long. They're going at it once again. He drives in a kick out, cross court catch and shoot three for Caesar. No good. Reedvo the rebound. Flan in transition. He'll pull up from deep and he cashes it home. Boogie Flan, what a shot from College Range, getting ready to play his days for John Calipari down in Lexington and gives Stepanak a 17 point lead, the biggest of the game. Second highest score in program history, only behind R.J. Davis. Sure looked like him there with that finish from deep. Has a nice clear out, leaves the shooter wide open, won't go. Offensive rebound by Dockery, and he'll bring it back out. Fleming couldn't hit from three. Dockery, he'll shoot a contested three of his own. That one's way off, and a foul going the other way. That one on Ibrahim. Yeah, push off on Ibrahim, and that's... Should put him over the limit as well as we look at this again. Bogey Fland here sees a lane and doesn't miss. And there, threes up on the hand. Bogey Fland locked in again. Was quiet early in the game. Only had four points through the first about 15 minutes of gameplay, but has really turned things on. Did at the end of the second and certainly has here in the third to help widen the gap. And that foul... Let's eagle over the limit, so Braylon Ritvo will have two free throws now to try to extend this 17-point lead for Stepanak as the first one. He left it short. As Boogie Fland will check out, we'll get a couple minutes of rest here. As Josh Rivera, the freshman, checks back in for the Crusaders. Second free throw for Ritvo, and he converts on that one. So now an 18-point lead as Ritvo will check out, and Adonis Ratliff checks back in. He's got two D1 offers from Bryant and Manhattan, some local schools around the area. Well, Manhattan at least. So now Eagle will have the ball back. Ja'Kai Sanders. Once again, the sh main guy here for Eagle at the top. Seven-second difference between shot and game clock. 30 seconds to go. A nice pull up Jay around the rim and it won't go for Jeremiah Jacobs. And now shot clock is off for Amir Sullivan and Stepanak. They can what hold it. for the final shot. What's just a dominant third period here for these Crusaders after Eagle had stolen all the momentum in the second, made it a close game. They have absolutely dominated. Five seconds now, Sullivan making his move. Kicks out deep, three at the buzzer. Way off, won't go for Caracy. But either way, once again, a dominant quarter for Archbishop Stepanak. 57 to 39 lead after three quarters. They're on their way to a city title game. And a lot of that run was sparked by the play of Boogie Flan. Yeah, Boogie Flan there, rising, ascending. They're the nice move. He can do it and finish in so many different ways. The Euro step, the nice drive, cutting downhill here. Transition moves, I mean, he has been doing just about everything you'd want from him so far in this game. 12 points, and oh yeah, he's cashed in from deep a couple of times too. John Calipari's getting a good one. Absolutely, he's more known as a long-range shooter, great shot maker from the perimeter, but it's been a lot of his game in the transition and getting downhill towards the rim that's been impressing so far. Yeah, that's why he's such a talent, because in the first quarter, if you remember, those shots weren't really falling from deep, so it looks like he made some adjustments and decided, hey, why don't I work it inside? Besides Ibrahim, there's no real post presence that's gonna stop me, and I've got the size and the speed on Sanders. 
and he's adjusted and he's been able to capitalize. He's also been a great distributor and maybe the best defender on this team. So Boogie Flan willing this Crusaders group ahead, but not to be overshadowed by his teammate. But I mean, you can't, you can't talk about this game without mentioning Braylon Rifo and what he has done for Stepanak as well. I mean, five three-pointers made in a championship game, 22 points in the game. He has been huge, and a big reason why those two, sitting right there, have the Crusaders up by 18, eight minutes away from claiming this title. And again, headed to Quinnipiac, Ritvo is, led by a New York fixture, Tom Pecora, trying to get some momentum back in that school for the Bobcats, as Eagle will start out with possession to start this fourth quarter. They trail by 18 after a great second quarter, just could not get it going in the third. They did close from down 11 to take the lead pretty quickly in the second quarter, but now an even bigger hill to climb. As Fleming will start off over to Sanders. He'll pull from three, and that one's short. Rebound tipped away, and Jacobs couldn't get it to go, but the second chance by Ibrahim is good, and he's in double figures today as well. I'm surprised we haven't seen as much of Jeremiah Jacobs in this game, especially with no Mangok lock. It's been mainly Ibrahim controlling the paint. I see, in terms of rebounding, looks like the adjustment's been made by Kevin Hamilton. He wants to have two bigs in there at once. As Amir Sullivan now running the show for the Crusaders. Now over to Rivera, lengthy freshman. As tipped away by Munyak and thrown away as now Stepanak back in transition. Pulling from three is Ratliff. He cashes it home. And we have a whistle here. And it looks like Pat Masseroni is going to call a timeout to get some subs in. But 60-41 to 41 now after the three from Darius Ratliff, the 6'8 sophomore. Only a 22% three-point shooter on the year. But when he's making them from deep, everything's going right. What a move because he got a two-on-one. Just keep passing it back and forth until you get somebody open. That's what worked out. Ratliff, great two-man game with the freshman Rivera. And even the young kids getting involved here for Stepanak as they set seven minutes away on the doorstep of claiming the first ever boys high school basketball overall city title here between these two leagues. And again, Stepanak, a rich basketball history, especially recently. We've already mentioned R.J. Davis, who's tearing it up in the NCAA tournament from North Carolina right now. Also, the two Griffin brothers, A.J. Griffin, who starred at Duke and is now on the Atlanta Hawks, and Alan Griffin as well, who went to Illinois and Syracuse and is now in the NBA G League. But also some football talent, Gavin Hazelop. NFL cornerback who bounced around some practice squads here and there, also an alum of Archbishop Stepanak. Yeah, certainly plenty of history. And history's being made here tonight. Again, for those just tuning in, first time ever we've had the CHSAA face off with PSAL for an overall title. Girls basketball earlier today, Brooklyn Law and Tech getting the victory, the edge against Kennedy Catholic, but an opportunity here for the Catholic League to clap back in the boys' division. As Eagle down by 19, almost throws that one away. Jacobs turns the corner and puts up a nice fall away. Jay won't go. Second chance by Ibrahim won't go either. And now Stepanak gets possession back. Carbuccia, Flan, and Ritvo back into the game. Ritvo kicks out for Flan. Catch and shoot triple is good. Boogie Flan does it again. He's catching fire from three. And the lead is 22, 90 seconds into this final quarter of play. A flame from Flan from deep there, and all of a sudden now three three-point makes from him after a dormant first 15 minutes. As Fleming loses control of it, but regains possession. Cross-court pass too high for Munyak, but it was tipped first by Josiah Jervis, so a bit of a, uh, bit of a bailout on the tip-off, on the tip. And it's becoming apparent that Stepanak at this point, I think, is wearing out Eagle Academy. It just doesn't seem like... The Eagles can keep up to the same level, getting tired out, getting out hustled. And I mean, when you're against a team with this kind of size and this kind of talent at all four grade levels, it's just not much the Eagles can do. They relied on a really hot second quarter to stay in it through the first half, but now Stepanak is really closing this one. Ibrahim once again in the post. Can he get the bounce? He does. Bounces about four times off the rim. And Ibrahim now up to 12 in the game. He's been a nice change of pace down low in the post even though they still trail by 20. Yeah, without Ibrahim, I don't know where Eagle would be right now. He's been good down low. He's gotten some boards. He's got a block as well. Good defense. He's been really crucial off the bench. Herbucha trying to drive in the middle of that zone. Finds Fland. 
Catch and shoot triple in rhythm and it's good once again. Boogie Fland on fire right now. And the lead is 23. Stepanak just pulling away here. As Sanders loses control of it but Fland will get whistled for a bit of a reach, found too much body. But wow, Boogie Fland, the Kentucky signee. You've said it before, but John Calipari is getting a good one after a bit of an earlier exit than anticipated for the Wildcats. Yeah, it looks like they might have someone who could have gone head-to-head -head with Jack Golke in some of that three-point shooting the other night. I mean, Fland now, again, locked in in his element, as you mentioned, in rhythm, no hesitation, catches that ball, has such a quick release, but such great touch. Now Sanders has eight points on the night. He's been going at it back and forth with Fland all night long. Now a rhythm three for Fleming, but he took a bit too many steps there. And now Stepanak will get the ball back. As Eagle Academy falls further and further behind, even still, great year. And this is a program that just keeps getting better each season. Lost in the title game two years ago, PSAL. Win it last year, don't go far besides that. And then this season, claim the championship and now get to play on this stage. This is a team that's getting better and better and hoping to get more and more D1 talent. As a catch and shoot tray was no good. Ratliff the offensive rebound. Driving his Carbucci, another Euro. Bounce pass down low, and the layup is good for Caresi. What a find from Carbucci. A little soft bounce to his right, trailing the other way. And now Sanders driving in a nice dish down low, but Ibrahim is blocked. Now in transition, Carpuccia, nice scoop layup off the backboard. Ritvo couldn't convert, a little bit of showmanship. Backfires, and now Eagle in transition. Sanders, tough layup, no good, but a foul drawn, and oh boy. Stepanak trying to get a little fancy there, and it does not pay off. Yeah, a couple giggles on the sideline for Stepanak because it was pretty obvious. Carpuccia wanted to have one of those signature off the backboard plays for Flan to finish, but Left it a little too softly off the backboard so it didn't get as much carom as he wanted to. And Flynn wasn't able to grab it. As Sanders hits the first free throw, he's got nine so far tonight. Again, he was committed to Siena. But earlier this week, Carmen Macharello, the former head coach, parting of ways from his alma mater. So now he's looking elsewhere for his recruitment. Yeah, just announced the decommitment a couple of days ago. So he hits the second free throw, and Sanders definitely someone who was a clear D1 talent with his shot-making ability, also an elite facilitator. It'll be interesting to see, especially for some of these local programs. Rhythm three for Carpuccia misses everything. And now Eagle will get the ball back. Carpuccia uh, trying to get a little bit of showmanship these last few possessions, and he'll take a seat with the coaching staff after that miss. As now Eagle will get it back, it'll be Sanders to bring it up once again. Jack Coco, sophomore guard, will check in at the next timeout. Eagle trailing by 23. High pass for Ibrahim, and a reverse layup is good. It's cut the lead to 21. Ibrahim been a bright spot so far. 14 points all down low. Yeah, actually, the leading scorer now has even surpassed Fleming. As Fland is stripped, diving stop. Almost goes out of bounds, and it does. Muniak tried to save it after a nice tip by Fleming. And now Stepanak will have the ball back as Coco does check into the game for the first time today. Yeah, it's, that's the other thing that's been a defining factor here. When Stepanak takes the ball away, they score. Not a lot of points off turnovers. Eagle, when they steal it, they try to go too fast sometimes, out of control, off their tempo, off their pace, the rhythm that they want to play at. And that's one of many situations where they've gotten the ball and then immediately coughed it up. And again, you just saw Jack Coco check into the game. Six foot sophomore as Sullivan off balance drive and he fights through contact to put even more points on the board as Stepanak has crossed 70 on the night with three and a half to go. Sanders thought about a three, fires over across the court and finds Bryant, Daquan Bryant. That won't go as the offensive rebound put back layup is blocked away. What a play by Darius Ratliff to send that one home. As you talked about, Alec, if your dad is an all star big man from the NBA, you're gonna have that size, you're gonna have those hops, and Darius and his brother Adonis both have those at their disposal. Theo Ratliff, a solid big man in the 90s and 2000s, as Sanders loses control of it, and now Rivera in transition for Stepanak. Almost got across the line, no backcourt violation, and a timeout by Pat Masseroni as he didn't like where that one was going, so he'll call time with some more subs coming in. But as we've talked about, 
what Pat Masseroni has done in just half a decade here at Stepanak, taking over a program that, like you've said, already well established as being great, and he's just taken it to another level. Back-to-back -back city championships, coached RJ Davis, several other pieces who are now making significant impacts elsewhere. And this team certainly with several players with the potential to do big things in college and beyond. And Boogie Fland right at the heart of that. What a game it's been for him specifically in the second half. Him and Repo combining to make nine threes. If you're Eagle Academy, there's just, you can throw your hands up, not much you can do about it. As Howard Isley Jr. checks into the game for the first time, he's known as a sharpshooter in the team, son of 12-year NBA, NBA veteran and Michigan assistant coach Howard Isley Sr. was a good piece on some of those late 90s Utah Jazz teams. As pulling up from three is Adonis Ratliff, that won't go. Long outlet pass and a layup is good around the rim and in. For Daquan Bryant, he gets on the board for the first time tonight. Coco trapped in the corner, he needs help. And he throws it away. As the finger roll finish is good in transition for Chase Beasley. And another turnover here. Eurostep finish blocked away by Ratliff, and now Stepanak finally gets possession back. Rivera spins around, and he draws a foul on Ajani Fleming. Ooh, quick few possessions there for Eagle, where you thought if they had some of this sooner, this would be a closer game. Yeah, that was chaotic. A couple of turnovers in the backcourt in a row for Stepanak, kind of reminiscent of what we saw from Brooklyn L&T earlier in the girls' game with a couple of turnovers back-to-back -back in the backcourt, but... At the very end, Adonis Radcliffe with the exquisite rejection on Dockery. Josh Rivera trying to work on Munyet. Now up to Coco. Picks up his dribble. A nice backdoor cut from Isley Jr. Finds Ratliff in the corner, and he cashes that one home. Adonis Ratliff joins his brother in the three-point column, and the lead is back up to 22. And now a transition three from Bryan, and he hits that one. And a timeout by Kevin Hamilton Jr. as it's back to a 19-point game. Eagle given one last run here with 2.16 to go. It was Johnny Fleming there from deep hitting that shot. And I think, again, Eagle needed more of that earlier on. It's They're doing this now against the second and in some ways even a third unit for Stepanak. But first unit against first unit, Crusaders reign supreme. 73 to 54 leads, Stepanak has taken out a lot of their starters here as they're just trying to ride out the clock here. As already, you can already see as Stepanak will break the huddle. You can already see that uh, Eagles starting to set up their press. It'll be Rivera to inbound in the backcourt. Again, 19 point lead for the Crusaders. Rivera will inbound, he finds Ratliff. Over to his brother. Now Coco will break the press. Now Isley, he'll try his luck from deep. That one's a little too strong. And the rebound taken in. And now he finds Munyak, a deep three. That's off front iron, rebounded by, by once again. Stepping at Coco, transition layup is good. And he converts on that one to make it back to a 21 point game. Now Fleming will bring it up. He'll pull from the free throw line uncontested and he cashes that one home. Back to a 19 point game with 145 and counting to play. Yeah, Johnny Fleming adding some points in garbage time here. But besides that, it's just had a great day separately. Cross court pass to Coco to break the press. Now Isley, fall away jumper and he passed it out a little bit too late and it's intercepted by Eagle. Now driving in, kicks out for Fleming. Another three, can he add? No, he can't, but Ibrahim, another offensive rebound, but stripped by Coco. Now he's in transition. Coco crossing over, now back to Ratliff, and he is fouled intentionally. So Adonis Ratliff gets fouled there. Not going to the free throw line just yet. As another sub here, Amir Smith, another sophomore, will check in for Darius Ratliff. Yeah, some frustration on that Eagle bench, but and Catholic League flexing its muscle here and Stepanak proving why they are a nationally ranked team on this stage. Rivera, nice spin move, lost his man, kicks out for Smith. Quick first step, puts up a lefty layup, that won't go, a lot of contact, but no whistle. Now Fleming in transition, kicks out, Munyak, rhythm three in the corner, a lot of contact and a whistle will be called on Coco and now Eddie Munyak will 
head to the free throw line for three attempts. Muniak only two points so far tonight. Hasn't made a shot, and that's, you know, it's hard to keep pace with Stepanak. They've scored 75 points in this game, but Muniak is someone you would have liked to see do a little bit more. It's really been Johnny Fleming who's been counted on in this game. Ja'Kai Sanders all in all. Boogie Flynn clearly winning that matchup. Just not nearly enough from him. So three free throws for the senior Moniak. Under a minute to play here as the first one is good. 18 point lead for Archbishop Stepanak over Eagle Academy. 75-56 with 56 ticks on the clock to go. Second free throw for Moniak is also good. As Coco will check out and Darius Ratliff will check back in. Some of the guys that don't get as much run on the court for Stepanek get some late game time today in this championship matchup. As here is the third free throw for Moniak. And he converts it. So 56 seconds to go here from the Steinberg Wellness Center. Trying to break the press. A lazy pass taken in by Isley. And Ibrahim's momentum kind of crashed him into Isley Jr. So a foul there. Still only three fouls for Eagle on the quarter. So still no bonus just yet. There's going to be a lot of turnover for this Eagle Academy team next year. Several seniors on the roster. Fleming, Sanders, Ibrahim among them. As a turnaround three from Ratliff won't go. Fleming once again in transition. A nice dish out in the corner. Thought about a three. And another scoop pass intercepted by Isley. He's trying to work in transition. Now he kicks out for Ratliff. Another corner three. Off back iron. And the rebound taken in by Muniak. Shot clock is off as he finds streaking teammate down the floor. And he converts on the layup. That makes it a 14-point game here. And now Isley breaks the press with the shot clock off. That'll all but do it here. As Isley driving in, puts up a layup. It's blocked away by Ibrahim. Now moving in transition is Eagle once again. Kicks out for three from the corner, and it's good. And all of a sudden, it's an 11-point game with six seconds to go, but not enough time for Eagle. Too little, too late, as Isley will run across the timeline, and it's over. Archbishop Stepanak, as Isley hits the three after the buzzer, it won't count, but his teammates still love it anyways. <laughs> a 75-64 win for Archbishop Stepanak over Eagle Academy in the PSAL-CHSAA championship matchup, led by Braylon Ritvo and Boogie Flan. Stepanak, the Crusaders, win this title. Alec, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Archbishop Stepanak reigning atop New York City, winning this first ever title game between these two leagues and what was a great day hopefully a tradition that's going to continue going on here girls and boys two exciting games that had some really interesting competition that came down to the wire I'd say there was some uncertainty in the fourth quarter in both of these and hey each league gets the championship it's going to create even more incentive for both of them to continue this competition and Howard Isley Jr. still getting mobbed by his teammates after he hits the three after the buzzer sounded but either way a 75-64 win for Archbishop Stepanak, led by great efforts from Boogie Fland and Braylon Ritvo. And from Alec Cradhamel, Eddie Kalegi to my left, and our entire crew here at League Ready, we say so long from the Steinberg Wellness Center after two great games in the championship matchup here in New York City. Thanks for watching, everybody.